Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oscar Buzz. Trevor here, joined by Thomas and a special guest. Yes. We have Jack from Oscar Film Forecast. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Exciting. Some Exciting. First, first collaboration. Yeah. First collaboration. Hopefully yes. many more in the future. More in the future, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. The Oscar Absolutely. season is just beginning. Yeah. I know. I know. We're getting back <laughs> into it. Well, it begun for us in April, but, you know. Yeah. I well, mean, we it's were always Oscar season. season. It's always yeah. Oscar season. Yeah. But uh, for for normal people, Oscar for season no begins <laughs> in uh, in so, about a month with fall festivals. Yeah. So I mean, we were just uh, talking before we were recording. Venice starts August thirtieth, August thirtieth or thirty first. Like it's is there thirty first in August? I'm bad. Uh, I yes. think so. Uh, yes. I think, is there? I have to do the song. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. But um, whatever the last day in August is. Uh, that's when Venice starts uh, with white noise, so that's very, very exciting. So we are going to be doing a uh, kind of a preview, a bit of predicting for Venice and TIFF. I would say pretty inarguably the two biggest festivals in the fall. I mean, you have your yeah, New York, you have your Tellurites, you have your AAFIs, but like Venice and TIFF are the big ones, and they hand out awards, which are uh, mm -hmm. the very big thing. The so, thing. yes, yeah. So... TIFF, they do a top three for people's choice. They also have their documentary awards and stuff. But, like, the main thing are their TIFF, people's choice. I mean, people's choice, the winner of people's choice, uh, if, if for, like, the past, like, what, like, 15 years or something like that, always gotten a Best Picture nom, always gotten a screenplay nom, always gotten at least one acting nom, and always won at least one above the line Oscar. So, whatever wins people's choice, there's a lot writing on it. Uh, so... I say we just jump in. We will let our guests go first. What are your uh, top three for people's choice right now? Okay. Well, I think the number one is probably a common number one. I have the Fablemans. Yes. Yeah. I 100% agree. I think, yeah. I think it will fit all those expectations that you just said. It's going to get at least yep. Michelle Williams. It will yep. definitely get into screenplay. It's definitely get into picture. So I think it yep. fits that pretty well. And then the other two, so looking at back at the past ones, sometimes – with these two, they tend to go for like some of the more artsy picks, like mm -hmm. less crowd pleasing. Like Power of the Dog did did get one last year, placed in the top three. So I think Women Talking, especially since she's also Ooh. a Canadian director, I think that also helps with the tip audience. So I think that would also be in my top three. And then the third one, I struggle with a little bit. Um, if it's going to be an artsier pick or a more crowd pleasing pick, I think right now I'm going to say even though the trailer did just come out and I wasn't a huge fan, the greatest beer run ever. <laughs> because I mean, I, it's, yeah, it's like constructed yeah. in a lab to be like a people's choice winner. It's like, yeah, and he did win I, for green. Book. I know. I know. It just looks it so looks, terrible. It just looks it so terrible. It doesn't look good. No, no. But so yeah, I mean, green book one. And Green yeah, Book's also did. terrible. It Thomas, Thomas it does, likes it ticks Green Book. Boxes. I like Green Book. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's not like a movie. terrible, terrible movie, but I think it being a Best Picture winner definitely degrades it. I agree. I don't think it deserved to win Best Picture. I just think it's I think it's a terrible. Hallmark movie. It's yeah. just a Hallmark movie. I, I it's more Hallmark than Coda was, I would say. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, I like Coda as well, though. Maybe I just like Coda. I, like, I, mean, I, yeah. I, like, I think I like Coda. <laughs> Like I yeah. think Coda's like largely inoffensive. I think it's a fine movie, but also just yeah, best picture. Best picture like, winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like, like drive my car. Right. Power of the dog and drive my car and the worst person in the world. I know it was nominated for picture, but like so many great movies. Like yeah, really. I mean, even like Dune, West Side Story, Liquor Speed. Like I don't know. There are so many great movies that year, and it's like that's fine, yeah. I guess. Um, so yeah, I also have greatest beer and ever. Uh, in my top three, it's just. Yes, it looks bad, but like, how are you, like, I don't know. It, it just, as you said, it looks like it's constructed in a lab to win people's choice. Yeah. He's going to deliver all those beers and then everybody's going to be like, oh, that was, yeah. he did, he did, he did the beers. Oh, he that's did that. Yeah. He did it. And then they're all going to be super happy about it. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's going to win. I think the Fablemans is going to save us yeah, from that yeah. fate yeah. where yeah. we have to start actually being like greatest beer ever in picture. Um, I think Max, it's like Russell Crowe and then maybe adapted screenplay since adapted's kind of weak. Was he but, in the trailer? Yeah. Russell Crowe? Russell Crowe. He was in like two scenes. He's like the old okay. guy who's like, yeah, this oh, is the yes, dumbest yes. idea I've ever heard. Um, yeah. So yeah, I have it in. Zac Efron looks vaguely charming. The, the poster looks so dumb. Um, yeah. 
but whatever. Um, <laughs> you brought up a good point though about Sarah Pauly being a Canadian director potentially. Getting I didn't think about we've, either, seen yeah. them, we've seen them do like some weird Canadian picks in the past with a Scarborough uh, just last year, same yeah. with Howard the Dog in Belfast. Yeah. So I also went for an art pick for my number three though with a Triangle of Sadness. Um, mm. One the Palm d'Or. It seems like just a massive like you know audience just is going to be like losing their minds over it uh you know having a great time laughing like getting motion sick as the boat's like rocking back and forth with the cinematography we saw in the trailer like it seems like that like big like audience experience thing uh and like what's another you know insane audience experience that won the palm d'or that premiered at tiff parasite and that finished third place in 2019 behind jojo rabbit and marriage story so yeah. that's where i'm at right now um so I do like I do like that women talking pick because I uh, I currently have women talking winning best picture. So yeah, nice. ooh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Yeah. So uh, I I would like I don't know that that that's definitely a a compelling choice. But no, yeah, I have Fableman's greatest beer ever in Triangle of Sadness. But Thomas, okay. what do you have? I followed you with the Triangle of Sadness pick. I I agree completely. My only worry is it might be a little too polarizing. Uh, this sort of category is one that you need sort of overall reactions to be sort of positive mm -hmm. so if there are quite a few negative uh reactions well, it's sorry to cut you off but like jojo rabbit was like pretty polarizing coming out it was just, it was and that's and that's why i've still got it in because i do think the overreaction will be positive enough for it to be a thing and my last pick then uh and i think this is one that i think will sort of balance the sort of more artistry picks and sort of crowd pleasing ish sort of picks and i think that's empire of light now i did have this winning best mm -hmm. picture uh, a little bit ago, reactions came in. People were sort of saying maybe it's not best picture winner, so I, so I took it off. But anyway, I do still think this is a contender, and I do think this is a very serious contender for an award like People's Choice, as as I say, it does sort of marry these two elements together, and I, I think it'll be overall very positively received. So, and if it is, why not for own People's Choice? So yeah. Sam Mendes was just announced to be their uh, their director tribute for this year. So that is a a very compelling argument mm -hmm. um though in all fairness harry styles for my policeman was just announced <laughs> yeah. as their actor i, I thought Gary about putting that in as well i, I thought about putting it in. <laughs> <laughs> um oh harry styles oh my god yeah i i'm just i'm curious to see if he can actually he can act, act yes yeah, yeah. let's Guys. see between don't worry darling and this like i mean because already in don't worry darling it looked like the accent is slipping uh we'll yeah. see we'll see yeah. if that's a choice like in Dunkirk as well, film. he just wasn't acting. He was just sort of there. Look, it's Harry Styles. And yeah. I, I think that, it's so funny with, with, uh, with Dunkirk because it's just every single time that movie starts to build tension, Harry yeah. Styles would just be there like, ha, that's Harry Styles. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So another thing for Tiff is Glass Onion. How are we feeling yes. about this? I mean, the first one yeah. also went to Tiff and didn't get anything, so... I mean, I, I could see it happening, though, because it is, I would imagine, probably more crowd-pleasing movie. The first one definitely mm -hmm. was, but I don't know. I feel like since the first one didn't do all too well, I don't know. The sequel, probably, yeah. I would yeah. lean towards no. But I wouldn't be super surprised if it did happen. No, I mean, it's an option. It's there. But, like, equally, I, I just don't think it'll be as good as the first one anyway. And if the first one couldn't make it in, then I, I, I don't see this one either being a thing. But it could, as I say. It's still there. Yeah. yeah, a couple other options to throw out the whale. I'm a bit skeptical about how strong this film is going to be, just overall as a as a movie. Yeah. With everything we know about the plot synopsis, like we'll see how Aronofsky handles it. Yeah, because it yeah. could um, it could, could not get out of hand quite quickly. Yeah. yeah, or if he handles it like you know impeccably, it could be one of the That's best true. of the year. But That's true. I don't know how much I trust Aronofsky. So, I also so. don't trust A24 to be able to campaign two different movies yeah. in one year. I agree. Well, they also have The Inspection, which is now closing New York Film Festival, and that also seems very oh. baity. Yeah. So, like, I mean, it's about, like, a, a gay black uh, man who's, like, rejected by his family who goes into the Marines and is, like, struggling with his identity while there. Like, seems incredibly baity, and it was selected yeah. to close uh, New York Film Festival. So, like... yeah. They they have a lot on their plate. I feel like either that or After Sun they'll end up pushing the next year, because um, After yeah, Sun they're also sending to TIFF. So another crowd uh, a potential crowd pleaser that I will shout out is Bros. 
Ooh, yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, true. I could yeah. see the audience like if this is good and it's like funny and it's just like a, the you know the crowd is just like you know in a riot like they're just having such a good time with it maybe it sneaks in yeah i do however think that sort of with a reward like this you do still need it to be sort of slightly more on the artsy side like even with the thing like the favorites as we're saying it's going to be yeah. massively crowd creating everyone's going to like it but i still think it's going to be it's it still holds that level of prestige yeah. maybe some like bros which is for all intents and purposes a studio romantic comedy maybe that will not be a thing but i, I could see it there it's still there potentially yeah the last yeah. last one i'll shout out is the sun by florian zeller which is mm -hmm. heading there the father did go to tiff it didn't uh it didn't finish top three uh but it's something to consider it, it's definitely something to consider so yeah. any yeah. other thoughts on tiff before we move on i think we're all in agreement that the fablemans is uh, is oh, like yeah. uh, until further notice yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. obvious number one uh, so just one more to uh, for our, i also think the banshee okay. of uh in Russian mm -hmm. might be a thing like the free bill oh, yeah. uh one so that's true. maybe that's pretty, pretty so like if they if they want to honor mcdonough again maybe they could that's just another one to consider yeah that's yeah. actually a, a really strong point um I want to quickly touch on documentary at TIFF. I I, know, I didn't ask either of you to like put anything here, but uh, I brought this up on our uh, Thomas and I our, our Oscars predictions, which should be out by the time this video is out. All the beauty in the bloodshed is going to Toronto International Everywhere. Film Festival. Yeah, it's it's hitting. I think all four festivals, if I remember correctly, it is the only movie yeah. this award season hitting all four festivals. It's by Laura Poitras, who won for Citizen Four. It's yeah. uh, the centerpiece of New York Film Festival. The only other doc to be, uh, you know, one of the gala presentations, 13th by Ava DuVernay, which won the Oscar. Um, it focuses around uh, the Sackler family, uh, which, dope sick. Michael Keaton yeah. Yeah. crushing at the Emmys right now. Like, Indeed. it's checking all of the boxes. So, like, I don't know. This feels like the, like, a sh kind of a shoe in as of now for like the TIFF doc winner. There's also Moon Age Daydream there and stuff, but like I'm predicting all the beauty and the bloodshed to be winning the Oscar, honestly, at this point. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's a very it, fair, it's all very Neon, Neon just picked it up as well. Neon just picked it up today uh, as as of the day that we're recording this. So like- They don't have much to push this things. season too. Yeah, I mean, they have Triangle of Sadness for narrative, but yeah. they're, they're yeah. a lot stronger in doc, even like between- yeah. Uh, that and then Moon Age Daydream, which, as I mentioned, is also going to TIFF, as well as Fire of Love, which is also yeah. like they also have a uh, broker as well. Or am I making that up? Yeah, no, they have broker. I'll begin yeah, so like Japan if that gets submitted not. by Japan, that could also be a thing that they might need to push. So we'll see, we'll see. But all right, let's uh, let's move over to Venice where we have a bit more awards to talk about um uh let's let's start out with picture i'll let her let her guess go first again okay okay i this is tricky because oftentimes in these categories i think there's like eight usually only like a couple of them go to an actual like english language film yeah. or like actor or director um so you really just have to pick which ones is going to be strongest in terms of english language um yeah. i think I'm going to go with probably for Golden Lion Bardo because I know lots of people are com making this comparison um, to Roma, which did end mm -hmm. up winning the Golden Lion, um, I believe. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. I okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was mixing it up with the favorite, which I think won the Grand Jury Prize or something. Yeah. I'll double check um, with you on that, but yeah. 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 But I think... Yeah, I think Bardo, I mean, Inuritu, I believe, has won um, for not his movie itself, but he himself has won something at Venice before, I believe. Um, but I don't mm -hmm. think any of his movies have won. It fits kind of the Roma thing. It is three hours, but um, I feel like that kind of stuff probably doesn't matter with the Venice crowd as much as yeah. it would with other crowds. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with Bardo and I'll I'll stick with that for now. I also have Bardo winning. We're in agreement. I also on this have one. Bardo winning. Oh, nice. We've got. We've got. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I mean, I have Bardo winning best picture sure at the it. moment. Yeah. So, like, I, I feel like I have to give it the win here. And yeah, for yeah. all the reasons you mentioned, like, it's 
it just looks very strong. It ticks a lot of boxes. I mean, in the Golden Lion, I wouldn't say that it's like as important to get as something like People's Choice. I mean, happened no, no, by Audrey one, one last year, which is a phenomenal yeah. movie. Like, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, but both you here, but also audience, um, please check it out. It's great. It got a BAFTA. Uh, it got a BAFTA nom for director last year. Um, but then it's also before that. So the winners before that were Nomadland, Joker mm -hmm. won here, which is really fascinating. Uh, <laughs> and like, don't love, I, I'm very, I have very complicated feelings about that movie. Um, yeah. uh, Roma, The Shape of Water won here. And then before that, it's all uh, international films that I've never heard of. Um, so <laughs> uh, the woman who left from afar, uh, just from all over the world. So there is a bit of a run of U.S. and Mexico, like North American films from 2017 to 2020. And then we had Happening mm. from France. So, yeah, I mean, it going back to Mexico uh, yeah. with yeah. with Bardo. Yeah. I, as you said, Inuritu just makes sense. He feels like a, the type of director they would honor here. Um, it just fits that artsy profile. I thought about maybe for director for him, but yeah, it just it really, really too, does. Yeah fit that very artsy profile yeah. um but okay so do we have the uh what are essentially their second and third place um choices here with the grand jury prize and the special jury prize uh did you guys do picks for those yes i did i did yes okay so uh my picks for those are athena and mm -hmm. i have a white noise so athena uh is a french film okay. Um, it is, uh, I think as of now, the strongest contender for the, uh, the French submission. It's by Romain, uh, Gavras. Um, so I think it makes sense. Uh, it just feels like the strongest of like the European films, um, I believe. So we can also look, we actually just got the long list for the European film awards today. So you could also kind of look through there, try to match some of those up with the festival, but it seemed the most strong, unless they go with Lost Illusions, which just won the Caesar last year, I think, uh, if that's eligible. This feels like their pick. Happening was the front runner uh, before Titan upset it, and it, you know, Titan should have been winning everything. But we don't need mm -hmm. to. We don't need me to be upset about that again. Um, so yeah, I have Athena in there as this like it felt the strongest of the international films that people aren't really talking about. That or. Um, Argentina 1985 was the other one that stood out to me. Uh, that one from Argentina by Santiago Mitre. Um, those were the two that I'd been hearing buzz about. So I feel like at least one of those two will uh, get in as long as they're strong. And then, yeah, White Noise. Why Why not? It's uh, I think it's their opening film. Like, it's going to a lot of festivals, as you said. If anybody's going to go for this movie, it's Venice. Yeah. Like, yeah. if any festival is going to embrace it, if any awards body is going to embrace it, it would be, like, the artsy festival in Venice that's known for rewarding taking big risks. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. That's why I've got White Noise in as well as my number two, I think, uh, for what yeah. you mentioned. My number three, and this was sort of because I couldn't really bother to go and uh, research all of the European ones that or in there, or ones, as you say, like Argentina. So I did sort of go with uh, one in the English language, uh, cover my bases there. So, you know, if, if one isn't in, hopefully I get yeah. to maybe. Uh, and that's All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, as you just mentioned. It's the only Ooh, documentary. Okay. It's the only documentary in competition, uh, which yeah. stands out to me, because that's like, oh, you're, you're only picking one documentary. And this is maybe clearly the best documentary at the festival. Who knows? Uh, and, and as you say, yeah, it, it's got a, a lot of buzz behind it good people behind it, good concept, all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, I thought, why not throw it into, yeah. Interesting, yeah. interesting. I debated it. So, uh, and this isn't out of the question. So Sacro GRA uh, was an Italian documentary and that won the Golden Lion in 2013. So okay. that no. won. So like they aren't object to uh, to rewarding documentaries in, mm -hmm. uh, in their higher categories. So that's actually, that's actually very fascinating. That's a very interesting pick. What do you got? Jeff? Yes. I also have White Noise. It's the opening night okay. film, as you said. Yeah. I think if any crowd's going to accept it, I think it would be the Venice crowd. They accept the more artsy, weird stuff um, more so than any other festival. And then for my other one, I went with one that you gave an honorable mention to, Argentina 1985. Yep. I've heard some buzz that is probably pretty good. Um, 
and I don't, I just I didn't feel super like I could totally see um what was it again? The, I forget what was it called the um the Athena film uh, doing yes, well Athena, just yeah. because that's France and France does France and Italy yeah. especially tend to do very well here. I mean, yeah, it won last year, so yeah, yeah. So I could definitely see that. I just went with something a little different, switched up a little um, with Argentina, nineteen eighty five. Yeah. yeah nice choice. The other the other big thing with Athena for me is it's written by and I'm gonna butcher the name, but Lad Lad Lee, I think, uh, who wrote Les Mis, um, which was oh, yeah, submission yeah. in 2019, um, you know, over Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And I believe he was also a uh, a member of the jury last year for Venice. Okay. So, uh, so then, I guess. He, yeah. he his writing definitely has a connection. Um I'll still never forgive him for making uh Les Mis because Portrait of Lady on Fire. Um I yeah. look, this is also just me turning into complaining about Francis submissions. But um yeah. I think rightfully so. Uh <laughs> agree. They made the made the uh, right pick with Satan, but they made the right pick with Satan and then it just the yeah, I guess that's the Oscars yeah. fault. Not- well, I probably I probably did prefer Petit Maman over Titan, if I'm being honest, but they're both great films. So, yeah. I mean, I also love Petit Maman, so mm-hmm. yeah. Um, not to get too sidetracked, but yeah, no, I think Athena and Argentina in 1985 do make the most sense for, for one of those international films to sneak in. What do we have for the Volpe Cup for actor? Because we have Hugh Jackman here and we have Brendan Fraser in. Is it one of those two or will they shock us with something else? Like, I mean, they went with Penelope Cruz and actress last year when like Kristen Stewart was right there. So what do you guys have for actor? I'll let you go first. I, I'm i going to probably butcher the name. Um, I know the first name. Ooh, uh, Luigi Lo Casio is who I went with for. Um, I'm going to also butcher the film's name. I think it's... Il Signor Deli Formici is what it's called. Um, okay. we'll Appreciate the attempt. Yeah, uh, I attempted. <laughs> yeah. Um, but usually, actor here all, um, goes to foreign performers more so than actress. They seem mm-hmm. to go with English language actress performances yeah. more than they do with actor. Um, I, I, I forget what the movie's about, but I remember reading the synopsis and being like, okay, that's a pretty juicy role um, acting wise for potential. Um, and he's also in multiple films at this festival. He's also in um, Chiara, I believe, which is okay. um, about the um, yeah. St. Clair uh, becoming like a nun, I believe, is what that movie is. He's also in that movie. Um, so I went with him. He's in multiple movies. Seems like a good role. I believe it's an Italian film. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's what I went yeah. with. Now, I also wanted to be a foreign actor, and I didn't end up doing it, but I really really wanted to put Cacho in for Bardo. I I, yeah. That I film really is just too to strong. It's just too strong in picture to deny it there. And, so, so, and it isn't a set rule that they only give out one. Uh, yeah, I but think it, it's unlikely. It the, yeah. Like, they typically try to stick to one. There was one in recent memory. I think the favorite they, got the Olivia favorite, Coleman. Yeah, and, Olivia, yeah, Olivia Coleman won the Volpe Cup, and then it was also a grand, uh, grand jury prize. So, okay. so, yeah, it's, it's not impossible, not but it's of, unlikely. But, uh, so yeah, I did limit that it down to Jackman versus Fraser, and I thought, I don't know if I just don't know if the will be a thing. I really don't. So I, I did go with Jackman. I think that's a a, a okay. safer bet to be a a, a good performance in Fraser because we don't know if he's going to be giving a good performance in that film. We we just sort of know the role. It's a juicy role, but will it actually be good? We don't know. Yeah, we're also. I would say the two of us, Thomas and I, a lot more skeptical of the whale than like everybody else yeah. within the space. Yeah. So yeah, lots of people have it in uh, picture, which is surprising. Yeah, yeah, I I wouldn't have it in picture. I mean, not to name names, but I know the Oscar expert is holding on to uh holding yeah. on to that one in picture, and I just really I yeah um I think it's actor at most, honestly, and then maybe screenplay yeah. if it's weak. But yeah. adapted yeah. screenplay is weak, yeah. So we'll we'll de- we'll definitely have to see with that one, but um. Yeah, I don't. I also really wanted to go Cacho, and honestly, that's probably like it, maybe it can do the uh, do the favorite, maybe, as we maybe. said. But I did go with Fraser here just okay. mm, yeah. because, again, they obviously aren't adverse to uh, the you know against I guess as I should say uh, adversity. So maybe it's Fraser, yeah. but as you said, it's typically an international performer. Which is why I want to go Cacho, um, yeah. because I think he makes the most sense of any of the international performers. But 
hundred percent. I, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. I do. I, I appreciate the research. I appreciate the yeah. research. I yeah. um, yeah. I didn't. It, it doesn't have a, a blue link on Wikipedia, so I. It uh, doesn't. Yeah, I, I have to go to IMDb <laughs> for that. Which apparently he's playing. Um, it says a Italian poet, playwright, and director who's jailed in nineteen sixty eight. Yeah. Under a fascist yeah. era law criminalizing gay activity, the informant is his partner's father, who forces his son to undergo electroshock. Conversion. Damn, I'm switching my prediction. Yeah, that's, that's, a, a, that's, a great, that's a great, that's a great role. Pretty, pretty juicy, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's juicy. very juicy. I uh, yeah. I love that prediction a lot. Okay, interesting, interesting. Let's move on to actors. As you said, they typically will go with uh, American performances more. So, I did Anna de Armas. I also did Anna Darmus. I yeah. also did, yeah. Okay, so we're okay. in agreement on Anna Darmus yeah. as an actress. Yes. I just why why not? Once again, if she's gonna like if she's gonna show up anywhere, it's Venice. Um, mm. There's also Kate Blanchett here, but I think they're gonna go for Tar elsewhere. Same. She's oh, that, that's, that was my thought process as well. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think they'll go for Tara elsewhere, but like I think that she's also there. I would also keep an eye on uh, Tilda Swinton, the Eternal Daughter, because they like Tilda Swinton a lot. This is Joanna Hogg. I mean, the Souvenir Part One and Part Two are two movies that I personally love a lot. I know they aren't for everybody, but I mean, I I think that she's a great writer director. Um, this is her first film after those two, and like Tilda Swinton's great. Uh, and I don't even know. If she's, I think she's a co-lead with Carly Sophia Davies, um, who is a relative unknown. Um, but I think that that's also definitely there. But I would say definitely Blanchett and Armist are the top two. And yeah, I mean, not yeah. to get into director, but that's where I have Todd Field taking director. And it's also uh, where I have Todd Field taking director. Also, yeah. we all do. <laughs> yeah, there we okay. go. Yeah. So, but in all honesty, I could see those two switching. Like, it, yeah. you know, I could also see Blanchett an actress, and then Dominic taking director for Blonde. Mm -hmm. I also so, thought about that. I just thought, you know, Tar looks like it's going to be a very heavily directed yeah. film. Not that Blonde won't be, Dominic, but I thought, yeah. yeah. But like Todd Field, maybe he's a bigger name than Dominic. So I thought, yeah, I'd go for him in director and Anna Drums here in actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, like. Tar just looks like a magnum opus of yeah. a film. It, it looks like so just big and masterful. I mean, and also welcoming Todd Field back after what, like, you know, 16 years. Um, yeah. I just think it makes sense to reward him and then Darmus for Blonde. So we're, uh, we're in complete agreement on that one. So I'm curious to see where we've all gone for screenplay. Um, I've done The Sun. For Me too. Okay, Thomas? well... I have done. I, I've just gone for a pretty random choice. I thought this might be something they would go for, though. Uh, it might be sort of the surprise. The Eternal Daughter, you know, Joanna Hogg. Okay. Uh, people like her in in the film industry. I'm sure in Venice as well. There is a lot of love for Joanna Hogg. And, yeah, I thought this, you know, I thought, okay, I've used up a lot of the big players here. I've used up The Sun already. I've used up Ty. I've used up Fardo. used up White Noise yeah. even, which could have been a screenplay contender, I guess. So I thought this is going to be maybe one of the more surprising picks of the festival and i thought yeah I'll, I'll go with eternal daughter no real reasoning behind it this was sort of just a throwing a dart in the map and seeing where it lands but yeah i thought why not that's fair that's fair yeah i mean i went for the sun like we know florian jeller is a great screenwriter so i just 100%. think it slots in well there but yeah the eternal daughter is definitely a a very interesting choice especially as you say when you've used up um the sun with jackman so yeah. we've all shut out banshees of inisherin I this was when I thought about going for a screenplay. I thought, okay, that's the sort of last big hitter yet uh, left. But I just thought, I don't know if that will be a thing at Venice. I think that's much more likely to be maybe a surprise choice of people's choice, but rather than yeah. a sort of awards contender here. Yeah. yeah. And I believe McDonough won screenplay for three billboards here in the past. That's so. why I was considering true. it. Yeah. Yeah. But... I don't know if they would repeat. Him. yeah it, it'll be it, it'll be interesting it'll be interesting there's also bones and all which i just i don't know I think it's gonna be bad. I just think it's nice. yeah yeah i, I do don't think it's gonna be gonna bad be i just it i don't it's know like what? the teaser yeah. looked the teaser looked decent but it looks way more suspiria than call me by your name yeah i mean i think fairly obviously if we know the concept yeah it um, might play better with this crowd but at the oscars I it think. might that's my that was my thought yeah 
Because I think it does just look quite mental. What if I mean, Taylor? So what if Taylor Russell Cannibals, an actress? But... What if Taylor um, Russell an actress? Because she's supposedly yeah, the lead in some of these. The supporting. It's like possible. she's really good in it. Maybe yeah. 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 But like, equally, I do think yeah. you do have two very good actresses already yeah. with Anna Darmus and Kate Blanchett though, so competition will be tight there. So I, I don't yeah. know. It's very possible. Though. A couple yeah. other foreign films um, to throw out or uh, international features are uh, Monica from uh, nice. Andrea Pilaro. Uh, I think that it feels like a thing. It's an Italian American co-production. I mean, it's a woman. It's about a woman who's returning home to care for her dying mother. Like if that's not baby. Yeah. Um, and then you also I'd have love for uh, her an actress too, Emily yes, Browning. Yes, I would, because of I would that. agree. Yeah. I would agree. You also have Love Life, which is a Japanese French uh, co-production. Um, okay. This is uh, by Ko I'm gonna put Koji Fukada, I think. Uh, it's going to be starring uh, Fumino Kimura. Um, and it is about a happily married woman uh, who, uh, who is living with her husband, and she decides to care for her son's long-lost father when he reappears deaf, ill, and homeless. So yeah, also could another, be baby. I'd also watch out for her potentially an actress you know maybe that's a screenplay thing um and then their last like i guess big jury prize and again this one i didn't i didn't ask of you guys to uh, to predict but they give out a young performer award so mm -hmm. last okay. year it went to the kid in uh, the hand of god which i've already forgotten his name uh, okay yeah but this year yeah. it has to be going to zen mcgrath right for the yeah. sun I yeah, would say you, so. you would, and, and for this one, they they aren't really too stingy about um doubling up. Like I said, it went to the hand of God, which also got the grand jury prize. So, mm -hmm. um, another thing to note is the past two years they've done ties for the uh the special jury prize and grand jury prize to essentially make a top five rather than the top three. So I don't know if they'll do that again this year. Um, but maybe that's where we see the, the stuff that we brought up, like Banshees of Inisherin or yeah. Love Life or Monica, uh, that we, you know, we've been talking about, um, yeah. sparingly. Maybe that's where we see the show up. Maybe both Athena and Argentina in 1985 are able to slide in. Maybe that's how, you know, all the beauty and the bloodshed is able to slide in the picture, uh, yeah. for one of those slots. So I don't know if they'll do that again. I like, there isn't a rule that's saying that there has to be two for both of those, but just interesting to note that that's happened for the past two years but yeah. those are our predictions for the it's toronto not. international film festival people's choice and the venice film festival uh awards international film festival i should say for both of us uh very important to note um <laughs> but any uh, any final thoughts from both of you on this i'll let you do you have any final thoughts um no i think we covered most of it yeah. i think yeah. i'd also I think No Bears is another film that I noticed yes. that we haven't mentioned. Yes. But I would maybe look out for, um, what's his name? Jafar Panahi, Panahi in director, yeah. maybe, I think is possible. And then who knows, maybe it could win surprise Golden Lion or Jury Prize or something. But maybe. that's really uh, it in yeah. terms of stuff we didn't mention. So I'm actually glad you brought this up because I meant to talk about this. Uh, we tricked okay. you. We're not done yet. Um, okay. So the director, Jafar uh, Panahi. So just very important to note with this. Um, he's been, uh, he just got arrested a couple months ago and is oh, imprisoned oh. for six years, but no, this is actually a good thing okay. for this film stances because, uh, he was arrested for propaganda against the Iranian regime because oh, the okay. film, no okay. Bear, that is good. the film, That's... no bears, it is very critical against like the fascist government yeah. there. You had so us there for a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> had you in the, first, in the half. first half. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so it's very, very critical of the government and they arrested him for it. Uh, and because it was originally supposed to premiere at Berlin, I think earlier okay. this year, oh, okay. and it got pulled because he was under investigation and they weren't able to send it. So he isn't going to be able to be there um, at the festival, but because, you know, he's going to be in jail. But I could see like the jury maybe trying to push this even I don't know about Golden Lion, but maybe into one of the like special jury prizes to bring awareness to it, or even like director for him. Uh, because I mean, a similar thing was kind of happening with Oscar Ferrati when that was being sent to Venice, mm -hmm. where uh, he was maybe, you know, maybe in jail, maybe not. Um, and I don't know, maybe, maybe we got a similar thing here because I think that that's a very big narrative. And especially with a small jury, this isn't like TIFF where it's like a big audience voting. The Venice jury is like 12 people. So yeah. with such a small jury, you know, that are just going to be deciding together through a conversation, 
maybe they decide to uh, reward this film in some way because of the uh, the narrative behind it to try to bring attention to his uh, his case. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah, very true. Definitely. Now, uh, <laughs> any more thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this is just exciting. Obviously, it's like, it's this is basically the start of Oscar season we mentioned in the intro, but we're going to yeah. be getting reactions for pretty much every single Oscar then like outside of the two big blockbusters, Avatar and Black Panther and Babylon, Babylon. as well. That Like, those are the only real major, major contenders that are not going to be here. But other than that, we're getting reactions for pretty much all of them, so it's going to be exciting for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Agreed. And uh, and Jack, where can everybody find you? Come yes, on. Oh, yes. wow. You can, on YouTube, search up Oscar Film Forecast, and that is where you would find me. Right now, we're doing a little bit more Emmy coverage than we're doing Oscars coverage, but yes. as we mentioned, Oscar season is picking back up, so Oscar coverage will begin soon. I did just post my recent predictions for August as well, um, so you can nice. find me over there. And on Twitter, I believe my handle is Oscar Film FC. So those are my two main places. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I noticed. I believe you, uh, you like us, are like the only pe two people on the internet that have Elvis in Best Picture. Oh, yes, uh, of course. I don't know why people don't. I, I don't know why. It's Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers, Brothers top yeah, thing. yeah. Oh, it's Warner Brothers top thing. I don't know why. I don't know in, get in. It's gonna get text. Yeah, it's, it's, text, it's a good yeah. package. Yeah. Watch out for editing. Yeah. Like it's yeah. 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 Anyways, editing, just yeah. wanted to set that out because you're the only yeah. other person I've seen that's actually uh, actually predicting Elvis for Picture. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be surprised. I guess. Yeah. I know, I know. But yeah, Thomas and I will uh, we'll be having our predictions up by the time this video is out, actually. Uh, we're spoiler alert because you've already seen it. Uh, we also have Elvis in picture. <laughs> um, yeah. So, nice. yeah. I, it also, uh, I was talking with Thomas before we started recording, just passed Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for domestic box office. So, like, yeah. it's doing it. numbers at the box office. So, be interesting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Thomas, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on Letterbox at T underscore, and it's misspelled Gladstone. I'm sure if you search it up, you'll find it, or just Thomas <laughs> Gladstone. Uh, links will be in the description yeah. anyway. I'm just gonna just gonna force Trevor to do it anyway. Uh, and yeah. then, yeah, that is that is about it. Do not have Twitter, will not get it because I do not want <laughs> Don't it. Blame you. That's that's fair. Um, and then yeah, I do the Twitter and Letterbox thing, and then obviously I'm here. But thank you everybody so much for watching. Go check out Oscar Film Forecast. Thank you. A great yeah, channel. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully the first of uh, many talks between us yes. over the course of this uh, award season. Definitely. Um, and put your predictions in the comment. <laughs> this is weird. I don't, it's hard to, yeah, anyways. Do it. Bye, everybody. <laughs>